Well, hello, welcome back to another exciting edition of Coffee with Stephen. So this week's blog is entitled The Tocqueville Paradox. Now, those of you who are not necessarily as versed in political philosophy or political science may not understand what that, that name means. But Alex de Tocqueville was a, a prison administrator in France, of all things, he had come to the United States in the early part of the 1800s to study our system, not just our prison system, but a broader study of the entire political system that made up the now new United States. Um, and his seminal work, Democracy in America, really kind of articulates what our national character is and what our national character is vis-a-vis -vis our government and how we set up a limited government. And because of that, we've allowed for this explosive growth, both in personal freedom as well as economic prosperity. He also issues somewhat of a warning, essentially stating that, you know, if we allow our government to become too intrusive, then this economic juggernaut that we've created is going to ultimately fall into peril. In any event, within the book, he articulates something that has been now known as the Tocqueville Paradox. Essentially, and he goes all the way back and looks at ancient history for these examples, but he says when a tyrant manifests, that tyrant cannot rule alone. There is always going to be a ruling class that enables that tyrant. Well, as the tyrant becomes more and more tyrannical and abusive, eventually the mandarins that help administer that person's state starts to realize that, you know what, the people are ultimately going to revolt. The jig is up here. And they are concerned with not only their own livelihood, but also maintaining that power structure that's been created. So they will help facilitate that tyrant's removal, either by force or by, you know, getting him to retire or just killing them altogether. The interesting thing is that throughout history, when this happens, the Mandarin class tries to throw up a reformer, somebody who will come in and will loosen the restrictions that the tyrant had originally promulgated, and the population will become all happy and new freedoms will reign. We've seen this in ancient Rome. We saw this in during perestroika in the Soviet Union, and arguably we'll probably see it in China. Now, what is paradoxical about this is that as soon as that reformer starts to institute these reform measures, the revolutionary class, that group of people that have been fomenting for change, suddenly become emboldened by these lessening restrictions, and it precipitates a revolution in and of itself. So, you know, not to say that had the tyrant remained in power, a revolution wouldn't have happened. But when the reformer comes in, it helps facilitate that revolution. And we've seen that happen time and time again. Now, most people, when they're looking at this, they're looking at it from the lens of foreign powers. You know, is China going to go through a de Tocqueville paradox? You know, um, or is North Korea going to go through a de Tocqueville paradox? What I find to be really interesting is what's happening in California right now. And I think California may, interestingly enough, have a de Tocqueville paradox. We've had arguably tyrannical edicts coming out of Sacramento and a whole host of things, and it's been going on for a while. People are beginning to resist, and people are actually agitating for change. This may very well necessitate, to some degree, a reformist movement. That reformist movement could itself help precipitate a much broader change. Now, I'm not predicting an immediate revolution within California, but I am stating that, you know, if we look at history as our guide, there is a real possibility that we may be on the cusp of something that could be very beneficial for freedom and liberty. In any event, as I always say, I want you to train constantly, train consistently, train repetitively, and train with purpose. And above all else, stay safe.